Bessie, and had had, had a profound influence over the Jewish community. The story goes as follows. It was during a lecture about how the various 20th century wars were won. And the one Jewish cadet in the class raised his hand and asked, Professor, why, why didn't he mention the wars that Israel won? So the professor answered, please come to my office after class. So the student goes to my <coughs> office, and the professor tells him, the reason I didn't mention Israel's victories is that none of those victories make sense. Logically speaking, there's no way that they should have won those wars. You Jews are something else. So the students only knew that he was Jewish, he was not observant to know anything about his religion. He decided that he needs to check this out. So he went to Israel, spent some months studying, and then decided to stay there and became an observant Jew. We Jews believe that God watches over us and protects us. Otherwise, there's no logical way to explain how we have survived over the millennium, how other civilizations and empires have disappeared from the face of the earth. However, we are also taught that we are not to rely on miracles. We have to do everything we can humanly do to protect ourselves. And that's why the Iron Dome this protection system is so important. They are our first line of defense for many witnesses and has extremely high success rate for the rest of the city. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Ezra Friedlander for hosting. Congressmen and women who represent us here in Congress in uh, Washington, D.C. As all of us know, since Israel's establishment, there has been no better friend to the state of Israel than the United States in support of Israel's defense. In 1973, for example, Israel was attacked by her neighbors in what would become to be known as the Yom Kippur War. After things settled down in the Middle East, President Richard Nixon dispatched Secretary of State Henry Kissinger to Israel to meet with Prime Minister Golda Meir in her office. Within a couple of days, Kissinger found himself in Israel sitting in front of Golda, talking for many hours, debating the different uh, bills that Israel would need to help them keep the defense of our state of Israel. Towards the end of the meeting and after lunch, Kissinger was about to leave. He looked at Golda Meir and he said, Golda, you know, you have two generals who exemplified themselves, who stood out in the state of, during this war. She looked at him and said, which two? He said, General Ariel Sharon and General Moshe Dayan. She was very thrilled to hear that thought for a second, looked at him in the eye, and responded, you know, Mr. Secretary, you have two generals in the United States that I wish we had here in Israel. He said, oh yes, in his deep voice, which two? She said, General Motors and General Electric. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to thank the members of Congress once again for taking time out of their busy schedules. And although they're not here now, I think we could all still give them a round of applause. instructions. 
Everybody on the bus lays down flat on the bus, and we're told if you see an overpass, you're on the overpass. If you're by television, there was one right ahead of us, and it's just as the bus stopped on the overpass, you heard the explosion right above us, literally above us. <coughs> I wasn't sure of how close it was, until a few seconds later, it started to rain on the bus. And it wasn't water, it was the part of the underpass, the little the particles of the underpass were coming down on the bus. It was very scary because I didn't know if that was the beginning of the entire underpass coming down. In the end, that's what it was. But that's how close it is. That's how little time all the Israelis had to make the decision of where to go when the bomb lands. If it lands, God forbid. And thanks to America and to Congress, the Iron Dome, which really, in my case, saved my own skin. I love everybody to be happy about that. This year, five billion dollars and more. <laughs> <laughs> Not popular. <laughs> Let me be brief, but uh, I'd like to thank Ezra, uh, Ezra Friedlander and the Friedlander Group for hosting this very, very important event. I think it is very important that we show and express our appreciation to the Congress for its bilateral support. It is very essential that we continue this support on an ongoing basis. I had a number of opportunities to go visit Israel and pay a special opportunity where to show Israel to, to give them gratitude and support during the periods of time when Scud missiles were falling in the south. I remember I was in the hotel. There was no one in the hotel but a small delegation that we were there. And while we were there, we got missiles that were flying overhead. So this, this Iron Dome uh, project that the Congress is, is constantly supporting is very, very essential. And it is my pleasure to thank them personally for continuing his vast support. So on behalf of our thank you all for coming. And I'm glad to get together again next year and, and, and greet the Congress.
throw up to everybody for being here, and thank you again. This brings us to the conclusion of our luncheon. Those of you that would like to have a minute, Leon Goldenberg is here for the document for right now.